Welcome back to Small Caps, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kerry Stevenson, and I've asked Michael Hudson, Managing Director of Southern Cross Gold, ASX code is SXG. Their project, Sunday Creek Project in Victoria, the renaissance of the Victorian gold fields, has just come out today, which is why I've asked Michael to come on, with an exceptional intersection of gold and timony at their Sunday Creek Project. I don't want to take uh, the, uh, the the whatever away from you, Michael. Good to see you. Thanks for joining me here on Small Caps today. Gary, thanks for always being there in such a timely, timely way. Well, it is timely today. Just before we get into it, brief overview, Sunday Creek Project, where is it? How big is it? What are you doing right now? And then we'll get into today's announcement. Yeah, Sunday Creek is a gold antimony project in the Victorian gold fields. So I think I can hand on heart say it's the best discovery outside the current mines in Victoria, of which we have two of the highest grade uh, top 10 gold mines in the world. So it's in a, a great jurisdiction. We've been exploring it for two years now. We put the first drill rig there two years ago. We put about 15 kilometres into it and uh, it, it, it continues to deliver and we'll get into some of the results. Uh, we drilled out over a kilometre down to 400 metres. The system's growing, multiple shoots, and it's open for 10 kilometres over a larger system with old mines that haven't seen any drill holes. So, so a lot to do. A lot to do. I just want to pick up on what you just said. Old mines uh, have been there before and because it's only about an hour north of Melbourne from what I understand... Are there any issues with getting back into the mining around that area? Uh, it's a really good question. I, when I first saw the project on a map, I thought, no, that's uh, that 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 looks close. But but you've really, like any project, got to get into the detail of what it means. Uh, it it straddles uh, partly the tenement, the Hume Highway, which is of course the major road through through eastern Australia here, and uh, on the western side of the highway. Uh, it's cottage farms and and people who commute uh, an hour into town, so it would be very difficult on the eastern side. And we're sort of five kilometres, ten kilometres to the east. It's traditional farming and state forests, which uh, which are used for hunting and motorbike riding and the like. So it's um it's actually okay. We have bought the freehold land. Uh, we bought three hundred and twenty acres of the freehold just to ensure access um we we're, we're the best land holder for ourselves and it just gives us a whole lot of flexibility going forward but um but uh, of course victoria is pretty close in in many respects compared to western australia to lots of communities so you've got to work with communities and um and and that's what we're doing and you know so far so good i think it's important to note that 320 acres that's yours that's freehold that and is some of what you're looking at because I want to go through Golden Dyke, Rising Sun, and Apollo. Are they all within that 320 acres that you own freehold? Yes, the the main trend is is within the freehold. There is a little crown land uh, area over the historic mining area, which is very common in Victoria. So there's a little donut in the middle, just to be specific. But um, yeah, absolutely, where 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 we surround it all. Fantastic. I just wanted to clarify that before we get into today's announcement, which is that you've drilled some of the highest grade intersections, gold and timony. Um, talk to me about or talk to us about today's announcement and why it's so significant for Southern Cross Gold. Yeah, it's a real teaser bringing it in uh, three or four minutes into the interview. So, so what we've gone and done is is uh, taken a big step out. So we've taken a 350 metre step out from where we've traditionally been drilling over the last six months. We've been drilling at the Apollo shoot, the Apollo area, and that's delivered fantastic grades and widths, you know, and and seen Southern Cross on a on a real roller coaster of um, doing so well out the gate from the IPO for, um, in, in May, June. So we're 350 metres away at a new pro, pro, prospect area called Rising Sun. Mm. So key point, big step out, and it's another shoot developing. It's the single best, highest grade intersection we have on the, on the prospect to date, which is, uh, it was 21 and a half metres at 15 grams. So there's the, there's the money shot, it included 2.1, meters at uh, 121.6. I just had to look up at the press release to make sure I got that number correctly. That's gold equivalent, but it's predominantly gold that uh, drives those uber high grades. So so a, a fantastic result in a new shoot 
and literally that we've just uh, put four, four or five intersections down to 250 metres and, and this is a jewellery box um, literally in, in that shoot. And don't worry, you've got a smile on your dial. This is an old mine though, isn't it, uh, Rising Sun? But they only drilled to quite shallow, is that right? And what you're doing is you're going deeper and you're saying the deeper we go, the more interesting it gets. That that's right. At the the well, it's it's interesting uh, from surface. There's a the very high grade drill hole at surface in the in 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 the middle of the deposit. Uh, the deposit the 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 chute, which is forty six, and even it's open. It's uh, there's a whole big step out we took six months ago, and and that's twenty one and a half meters. It's something like five plus grams gold equivalent. Also, that's the deepest hole. So we're drilling under that now, and and those results are pending. So more results are coming. Has this, because you've got Golden Dyke, which is the most prolific area that you've been drilling to date, Rising Suns come along. Has it surprised you with these results today? Because they are pretty significant. You know, I always say that hope is not a strategy in exploration, <laughs> but it's a good it's a good part of it. So of course we we're, we're surprised on on the upside here um without a doubt um when the core came out and you know it was was literally as i say like a shotgun had shot um this this little fine gold all through the core so so um we knew it was something special when we saw it and of course you can never be sure until you get the assay results but but that being said we we know from historic uh, workings that the old timers mined up to hundreds and hundreds of grams. So we've really been waiting to to see those, and that's what drove the old mines. and And Rising Sun was only and it was a historic mine, but down to forty five meters. So it's yeah. it was hardly a significant mine. So it's a little sad that you know those toiling away in the eighteen hundreds left such great things beneath their feet. But uh, but it's low hanging fruit for us and 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 to our benefit. Uh, are you still doing, is your focus now on Rising Sun with these results today or are the rigs also still going on Apollo and uh, Golden Dyke? When our, uh, the strategy has changed somewhat. So um, three or four months ago, we were focused on Apollo and demonstrating continuity around you know the, the big hit there, which was 119 metres at, at uh, 3.9 grams gold equivalent. Um, now we've moved on to drilling over the 700 metres of strike. So we've got some holes coming from Apollo area where we actually have six shoots there already and one defined in detail. Um, we're drilling in different orientations across those shoots because uh, structurally hosted gold is, 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 as it, is as it states, it's structurally hosted, which means it can be lots of different structures. And that's what you see it at Fosterville, for example, yeah. and, and Costa Field. It's not just one set of structures that are mineralized. So you've got to drill in different orientations to understand all those variations. So that's what we're doing at Apollo. But we've stepped out. We're drilling at Rising Sun when we're putting some of the first holes that haven't been released yet, um, that are pending uh, under Golden Dyke. And, and remembering Golden Dyke uh, that we've spoken about before, at least here, was the most productive mine, was over 200 metre strike. So it was a, quite a restricted little area, but it went down to 180 metres, which was a very big effort in the day. It's the most productive mine across the whole 10 kilometres and we haven't put a drill hole under it yet. Um, and and that seems a bit crazy, but it was because it was deeper, it was easier to go under the shallower mines first. And actually, most of the discoveries we've been making on the field were not the old mining areas. Um, we found oh. things that were un, unmined and untouched. So that's that's interesting. Now, you've mentioned a couple of things. I want to go into Fosterville, uh, Fosterville and Costafield. Um, is, is this got a Sunday Creek project? Is it along the same sort of geological structure? Like, why is it so prolific for gold where you are? And you are not that far away, I don't think, from Costafield and Fosterville. In geological terms, we're next door. In geographic terms, we're close, but it's still 50 kilometres. So we're not um, abutting, but it's the same gold event. So it's okay. the same fluids that manifested themselves at both Fosterville, Costa Field, Sunday Creek. There's nine historic fields 
in Victoria that were this style of gold, a very different style to what made Victoria famous. It's not the Ballarat Bendigo's nuggety style of gold. That's a different geological event. That's okay. that's that's something that that uh, we're not looking for. So we've got three of the nine historic epizonal fields, of which include Fosterville, Costafield, three of ours, Sunday Creek, Rue and Redcastle, and then and then there's only another four more that uh, were mined historically. Now, I'm sure there's a lot more to find undercover, et cetera, um, but, but you, you take the low-hanging fruit and the, the old-timers were the best explorers um, and they've, they've defined things very well for us. And, it, and it's technologies like LIDAR uh, that, yes. that we've um, bombarded uh, laser beams out of, uh, out of the aircraft like you do with your iPhone, but at much bigger scale. And we've been able to see through the thick vegetation and where the old timers worked. And you can see everything, everything in such detail. It's such a dramatic change for us. We can see not only pits and shafts and, and dumps, right. but you can see where air blowing, you see where they are placer mining, like little, like little pimples down the, uh, the old creeks. And you can't literally see them if you're standing on them, but at the scale of the LIDAR, it works beautifully. So that's how you're able to target so effectively, because that was one of my questions. It seems to me that Southern Cross Gold, what you're doing, you, see, you just seem to be, you either got very lucky or technology's helping you. Uh, do you know what I mean? It, it seems to be very effective at the moment. So is that the LIDAR technology? The LIDAR is for the regional exploration more so. So you'll see that come to play when we start stepping out into the uh, the more regional areas, I, I I would credit the success that we're having at the moment um, to to a number of factors. One is orientated drill core, so we're really for the first time ever um, putting orientated drill core into these systems, and and they are structurally. What does controlled. that mean? What does that mean? Sorry, orientated drill core. You mean that you're going in a different orientation? From yeah, that, it's, it, it's it's obvious to me, but it sounds stupid when you ask that. When you are when I talk and you've asked a very obvious question, orientated drill core basically means that we can orientate the drill core in the ground. So we take a cylinder of rock, but we don't know where that literally sits in in space because it could be three hundred and sixty degrees if you like. But we orientate that drill core. We know where the base of the drill core is, so then we know exactly how that when we pull it out of the ground how that core sits in the ground. So then we can measure the, the structures within that drill core accurately as they are reflected underground. And that means we've got a gold bearing structure here. We know it trends in a northwest orientation, for example, because we measured it. And then we can go to the northwest and hit it again and hit it again. So so orientated drill core is, is not... A, a new technology per se we you know when i started my career 30 years ago we used to just throw spears literally just um metal rods with a little pointy tip down the hole and hoped it hit the bottom of the core and that would give us the orientation now it's all done electronically with signals and and units at the top of the the drill barrel and 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 so and the accuracy is is very good and we can do it every run now so what used to be every 40 or 50 meters and the drillers hated doing it now we get every three or four meters so we can literally put all the drill core together if it's not too broken up in its true orientation so that's a lesson on structural geology <laughs> well i always love having a let you as i say to everybody so long as you learn something new every day, you're you're going forward. Um, I'm talking to you at the beginning of October. Um, where can this project go? What's the next steps? What can shareholders or people listening right now expect going forward? So just to take a breather here, we we we've hit some very good drill holes. People thought we we're one hole wonder. We put multiple drill holes and show in continuity. Today's uh, release shows that we're not just a one shoot wonder. We're a multiple uh, shoot. Uh, we're developing multiple shoots. So the system is just growing very nicely at grades that you don't really see. Um, so our job today is to make this bigger. We're okay. not working to drill it out um, in fine detail. We're working to drill it out for understanding as we've talked about, but we need to make this bigger. So we're going to be drilling out Golden Dyke, Rising Sun, 
this there's five out of the six shoots at Apollo that we haven't tested. So now you're thinking, my goodness, there's a, a, a seven or eight hundred meters of strike down to four hundred meters at least that they've got to drill out. They're going to do a lot of drilling, and and yes, we do. So we need more drill rigs, and then of course we've got the ten kilometers of that LIDAR, um, those workings that we've identified from the LIDAR. We've done lots of soils out there and we know there's some big uh, anomalies and, and old workings out there. So so the only limitation is drilling uh, and the only limitation I think is getting the strategy right or wrong um, yeah. about how we, you know, we're, we don't want to be bulls in a china shop, but we don't want to focus too quickly. So at least this year, we're going to be working with, we're going to try and find more rigs. You know, the results are spectacular um, and and warrant more drilling. Uh, to make this bigger, you you may see us at some point start to take a, a big step out and, and look down towards a kilometre depth um, in some parts of the system, not drill it out, but take some bigger step outs just to demonstrate to ourselves and the market that the system continues at depth. And these epizonal systems at least at Fosterville and Costa Field, below 800 metres became those true Cinderella zones where they became uber high grade, the antimony dropped off. And and we'd like to see whether that zoning happens in our project also. Could be quite exciting. Why is the antimony, uh, because that's often mentioned, uh, certainly in your, in your announcements as well, why is that important? That's important. It's, it, it's important uh, geologically because it shows us where we are in the system. But but critically, no pun intended, um, it, it is uh, uh, one of the world's most sought after critical minerals. It's literally up there on supply and demand uh, charts, up there with rare earths. Uh, 80 wow. plus percent of uh, the antimony supply chain comes out of China and Russia today. It's a defence mineral. Basically, it's used in alloying metals and making them very hard it's used in uh it, it's used in flame retardancy um every bit of plastic that we have wrapped around all our cords here that i see in front of me have been doped with some sort of antimony products to stop them burning um it's used in drones and um, uh, laser vision, night vision goggles, and all all wonder wow. of things. And 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 it's not a metal that you don't want to have a, a a control of. So Victoria and this project has an ability to form a very solid base for antimony, the antimony supply chain in the Western world, wow. um, and and we're at the forefront really of that. So it is it is a um, a very important part. The gold. Will pay. It's about eighty-five to ninety percent of in situ value. The antimony is is the potential byproduct, but a very important one. Does it make it more difficult when it? And look, I know processing is way, way, way down the track. But when you've got gold antimony mixed together, does it make it harder in the end run with the process? Uh, it, it's actually not like um, a rare earth and everyone sort of is educated enough to know that rare earths is not about finding them, it's about processing them and that's where the risk lies. Antimony is actually a pretty standard um, metal. So so we, we, we'll we take what looks like free gold from this deposit, gravity separate, and the rest of the gold, will, about half of it will be gravity separated, about half will report with the antimony into a, into a concentrate. Today... As part of that supply chain, that uh, those, those uh, concentrates are, are treated in in China. So there there needs to be a Western world uh, opportunity here. Uh, the Omanis built one, and then the Chinese uh, bought all the supply uh, to 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 that uh, smelter. So that's sitting there without consistent supply. That's where Victoria can play its role. Uh, Michael, I know you've got a massively busy day ahead of you. Uh, I want to finish up now because I want people to understand. Give us three reasons. Uh, you know what I'm like. I like to end th this way. Three reasons why you think our beautiful audience out there should be sitting up and taking notice of Southern Cross Gold right now, especially after today's announcement. Yeah, so a, a, a very special deposit that one will will be differentiated in grade in the Australian space. If you look in the Australian explorer space where the resources are not developers but explorers, there's there's only two uh, projects 
that exceed three grams, only two in the top 20. So that that's one way that we'll really be able to distinguish ourselves. Grade uh, uh, is a forgiver of many sins. In terms of scale, there's only four projects in Australian explorers, explorers with Australian projects that are above 2 million ounces. This, this I can't, we haven't got a resource yeah. here, but it's got the scale to become quite large if it continues to work. So we need to put the drill rigs there and all caveat emptor, but that we can really distinguish ourselves with grade, with a project of scale. And, and then I think you touched on it before, um, you know, we've, we're having wonderful success and that that's a, a, a function of a very good deposit, but also people who know what they're doing and how to find gold. People that know what they're doing and how to find gold. And boy, are they finding it, ladies and gentlemen. The ASX code, as I said before, is SXG. Southern Cross Gold, latest announcement out today. Uh, as I said before, the highest grade intersection of gold and timony at their Sunday Creek project. Michael Hudson, Managing Director, thanks so much for joining me on Small Caps today. Kerry, you're wonderful. Lovely to be back with you. Uh, take care. <laughs>